Welcome to Payback 2015. Remember, you've got to make Roman Reigns look strong. Really strong. The Dropkick. Welcome to episode 8 of The Dropkick. It is time for us to get payback on all the time we've wasted watching wrestling this year. I'm Matthew Kershaw, joined by Carl Shubman. Yes, you are. We're here to run down the amazing show that was Payback 2015. Starting are you being off... sarcastic? Well, let me tell you about this amazing pre-show, okay? Then you'll... Are you being sarcastic? Yes, I'm I can't being tell. sarcastic. Alright, good. So, pre-show. You would never watched... You didn't watch this, did you? No, no. I f- fuck pre-shows, but three hours is already long enough. So you missed the amazing bout that was R-Truth vs. Stardust. I thought it was meant to be like fucking Cannon and Dorf. What's their names? <laughs> Cannon the Ascension. and Dorf. <laughs> Have I got that wrong? <laughs> Kane and the Big Show. What? Oh no, they were on there. So, you know, I tuned in for the pre-show like I did. And then I was doing something else at the time because they weren't bringing on the match. And when I tuned yeah. back in, R-Truth and Stardust were in the ring. And my only notes are, what, why, oh, R-Truth won. Okay. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so, yeah, that didn't get any sort of ring for me. I didn't watch the match. Didn't even know it was happening. No. But no. the match that was happening, the Meta Powers, Curtis Axel and Macho Mando versus the Ascension, who are Connor and There you Link go, Link. the Ascension. Not Connor all, and Dorf. You said like Kane Ganondorf. And Dorf. Ganondorf and Link. Ganon, yeah, basically. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, Blackhead yeah. Link with muscles. This this match was just as dumb, although it was kind of cool. Curtis Axel came out in like full Hulk Hogan gear with Hulk Hogan's music. And the crowd went ballistic when the music hit because they thought it was the real Hulk Hogan coming down. Oh, right. What a tease. (laughs) It was, yeah, it was. It was a massive, like, comedy match. Like, Curtis Axel starts hulking up as uh, one of the Ascension is hitting hitting him. So he's there doing the weird, like, fucking vibration he does (laughs) when he gets punched. And he even hits a fucking Hulk Hogan leg drop on one of the Ascension. Yeah. (laughs) Which is super dumb. Weird. Uh, yeah, but it was like a massive joke match. Even JBL called uh, Macho Mando, he called him Man Cow, and then started talking wow. about cows for like five minutes. <laughs> I should have fucking watched it. <laughs> uh, there was like, we want Mizdow chance, and then Mizdow gets tagged in from a hot tag. He goes and tries to take out the Ascension, goes to hit the Macho Man elbow drop, but the Ascension pull him off, and then they hit him with the fall of man and win. Because, yeah. you know, the Ascension have to win this because they're such a great team. Are they good? Were they good? I heard I I only just started getting into NXT around the time of Arrival, I think it was, that's that special. Yeah. So I never like saw the quote unquote dominance the Ascension had in NXT. And I've always thought they were really good. But people online, from what I've read, they were like, Yeah, the Ascension were always shit just in NXT, their shitness was hidden. Yeah. I uh, I haven't seen them wrestle at all. What you, you want about? You watched them fight the old age outlaws. No, I didn't. I missed that one too. That was pre show. No, wasn't wow. that the very first match that lasted like two minutes and I skipped it thinking it was promo? <laughs> yes. I think I saw. I think they were in the ring during the WrestleMania uh, Andre Memorial uh, Rumble or whatever. They but... were. You were confused who they were as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure they're great. They look like Sith, so they're probably great. Yeah. Uh, so that's. I gave that match one and a half stars just because of how dumb it is. It's probably more than it deserves. <laughs> yeah, I didn't rate it, obviously. Yep, but uh, I'm sure you rated the next one because your husbando, Dolph Ziggler, is facing Sheamus. This next match was, like, unrated. They just kept bringing up asses, and there was, like, raw finger up ass. It was amazing. So, yes, I rated it. <laughs> the, that's, uh, that rude word that I'm not going to say on a podcast... Ass? Asshole. No, no, the C words. Oh yeah, sure. That's yeah. that's good form. Good form. Yeah, he was back again. He, I think he was at the last pay per view. He was on the hard cam with a light shining it at the camera, and I. Oh, I out. noticed it this time. Yeah. Yeah, he's a fucking asshole. Yeah, what a wanker. Fuck that guy. That's like my what first note what? here is that <laughs> C word is back again with the light. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Well, you can what, edit that one out. Edit what, that one out. What did you think of this match? Uh, it was, a. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. It was fast. Did you like Paste, Dolph I mean. Ziggler falling over and holding his knee for five minutes? Like, every five seconds? 
Uh, well, you, you know, you've got to do at least one match every event has to be the going for the knee one, don't they? Well, they, now that Rey Mysterio's gone, they need someone new to have knee injuries, so that's now Dolph Ziggler. I was confused, because early on there was a lot of people cheering at apparently nothing. Uh, like, I mean mad cheering, it was really weird. I don't know if it came across when you were... Did you watch it live? I watched it live, yeah. Yeah, well, it was super weird watching it back. I didn't really get on it. And then I thought I was watching the wrong pay-per-view because they were talking about whether they said ass or ass again. And I'm like, am I watching last month's pay-per-view? <laughs> Turns out I wasn't. It was just a uh, mad deja vu. Uh, I, I don't Sheamus remember ran cheering. Into a post. I don't remember yeah, cheering. I got, super, I got super weirded out because like, it, was, it was quite early on. The crowd went like mad or something. Or maybe I just had my volume super turned up and I didn't know what was happening. Were you watching on the network? They like dubbed in cheering? It was probably that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, if it was, it was super obvious. I don't know. This match was all right, I guess. Like, Sheamus looked like super strong and he was giving uh, brutal elbows to Ziggler. I'm yeah. sure you like it because at one point Ziggler pulls out his ass and rubs it into Sheamus' face. That was pretty great, yeah. I well, love that. And then Sheamus was like virtually throwing up, like in the most uh, <laughs> overacted way possible. It was wonderful. Yeah, I, I, my note here is once again, Kyle's erection pierces the heavens. Yeah, yeah. There was a sick ass dodge. Ziggler did the sick ass dodge, and then did something like leg into head thing. Oh yeah, uh, Sheamus went to hit the bro kick, and he dodged, and then used the famous, uh, and only yeah, got two counts. Pretty from awesome. It. It was pretty awesome, yeah. Not as awesome as the Batista bomb Seamus broke out. <laughs> That's the Batista bomb and the Alabama Slammer are two moves I'm always going to point out because they're awesome. Yeah, the Al- I like the Alabama Slammer. I like alliteration. Yeah. Uh, at one point, JBL started going on about uh, young people and women watching the show and therefore having his ass out on camera was like degrading or something. It was pretty amazing. Really? Yeah, it was. He went on it for a while. He's like, I can't, I can't believe he would do that with young people and watching. It wasn't even a kiss me ass match. It was, <laughs> it was bizarre. It was bizarre. That's that's super dumb, especially considering you know, five minutes later, Ziggler blades and he's just gushing blood in the ring. Oh, it was awesome, wasn't it? It, it was intense. So dumb. Did you see how he did it? I couldn't work out if he did it when he was grabbing the side of the ring, or it was later on when Sheamus was grabbing his head. No, what happened was he was, you know, crawling up and uh, Seamus was grabbing his head and hitting him. Yeah. And then, I don't know when he did it, like, Seamus punched him back and held his head and he could have cut his head then. Or yeah, that's he, what I thought it was. Or he hits Seamus with a super kick and then falls over and then he could have done it. So yeah. either it way, was... he didn't he didn't get hit and then bled. He hit <laughs> Seamus and then cut himself to bleed. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> it wasn't it meant to be on some sort of headbutt or something, the commentary was saying. Yeah, but it, it was, was like the most intense blood. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of blood. I was surprised. It's all over the ring. It was beautiful. And I his like face as well. I like that they're doing blood again. Like, yeah, it's good. Uh, Seamus busted open Brian, Daniel Bryan on a SmackDown. He had a huge, huge <laughs> gash in his head with sta- uh, staples. <laughs> so the one thing that happened in SmackDown this year so far. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. Like, they don't have to have, like, massive blood baths like they used to do in the Attitude, attitude Era, but, you know, a bit of blood's all right. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I liked this match. It was it was pretty fast. It was well, fun. What did you give it? I gave it a four out of five. What? Jesus Christ. That's a good on my ranking scale. I don't know what you're whinging about. It's out of five. Yeah, that's... I gave it two and a half. That's as that's saying it's poor. No, I Only you can't have average. Halves. I'm saying it's average. But average would be three. No, it wouldn't, because we're using the Meltzer system. And that's no, we're not. We're using the system... And you can use halves and quarters and three quarters. We're using a completely new, pioneered, only on GameDrops.com system. No, that is how wrestling Good. is rated, and we're following that. You can follow that. I follow my own. <laughs> so that way you give this crappy match four stars, because it's good. It, it was good. It, it, the fucking fighting, you know, it was good. There was blood, there was ass. What more do you want? I That's how like... I review games, damn it. That's why The Witcher is going to be game of the year. <laughs> if you think that was a four-star match, I would love to see what you give the next one. Uh, it might not be that surprising. I enjoyed this one too. It's a two out of three falls tag team match for the WWE Tag Team Championship between The New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston with Xavier Woods against Tyson Kidd and Cesaro with Natalia. Yep. It was uh, It was good. Did you? Couldn't did work you... out. Sorry. I was going to say, did you like New Day coming out and wrecking Baltimore for like five minutes? 
No, I missed them. I only saw the uh, the yeah, right, the fucking network on the web browser anyway is really difficult to like. You can go back by ten seconds, and that's about it. So if you want to get a precise like down to a few minutes, it's you're just guessing. It seems to be locked onto chapters, so I couldn't get it to go back to the very beginning. I only saw the Tyson Kid Cesaro entrance. Yeah, which was boring. Whatever. Well, so no, what happened? They come out and start saying that they need to think positive, which is kind of dumb considering what's happening in Baltimore right now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What it is, hap- it's, what is well, happening in Baltimore it's, right now? It's where the riots are, isn't it? Or is that somewhere it's, else? It's, there's probably riots in every city. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was Baltimore that the riots are happening in. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Probably. But, uh, either way, yeah, they come out and get some cheap heat. They, like, slag off local football, hockey, whatever team it is that they have there. Yeah, because uh, fuck sports. Yeah. Tyson Kidd and Cesaro come out and they get massive cheers, which is awesome. Yep. They're wearing some sick ass colours. They were sick. Proof- they were in purple. I, I thought it. they suddenly teamed with Neville. <laughs> I, I thought they mil- looked like uh, Milka bars. <laughs> Personally, it was that same shade of purple, but yeah. Oh, God. We're not taking the what's, what bar is so and so from OSW or two. Come on. I, sure, absolutely. I know what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. <laughs> anyway, back to the match. Uh, Cesaro, fucking strong. Big E, also strong. Did you see what they were doing at the start? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty it was good. Amazing, just like picking them up. Cesaro just held. Um, was it Kofi in that stalling suplex for like a good minute as Tyson yeah, Kid slowly climbed up the turnbuckle to jump? Yeah. It wasn't the greatest like payoff, I thought. Like Tyson Kid didn't actually look like he connected at all. Yeah, it did. It, it, it was cool great. to see. Uh, yeah, so because this is a two out of three falls match, usually you get a fall really early, and it happens with Tyson Kin Cesaro get the swing and then the boots to I think it's Kofi, and then they get the first yeah. fall pretty early yeah. on. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I didn't know it was a two out of three falls, so I just thought they'd won. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> what? We've got like three hours or more of this shit to do. You can't just do that in the second match. But then it became apparent really quickly. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I. Don't remember when, but apparently Xavier Woods used Natalia as a shield at one point. Yeah, probably. I don't remember I don't... when, though. There was some shit outside the ring, there always is, but I couldn't remember exactly what happened. I think uh, Xavier Woods is talking shit outside, so he goes out to stop him, and he ducks behind Natalia. Because yeah. this is the point where Big E like gives him a brutal belly-to-belly on the outside, onto the floor. Right. And it looked so painful. <laughs> Yeah, I remember now, yeah. yeah. That's when uh, Cesaro just rushes over to him and he grabs some water from a fan and pours it over Tyson Kidd as if he's like knocked <laughs> out to try and wake him up. Yeah. It's pretty cool. There's some weird moments in this match though. Like, there was a couple of... There was... Uh, what was it? When Cesaro was trying to... Was it lift Big E and he didn't really do it properly? Oh, yeah. He There's tried a couple of moments like, like a that. Steiner powerbomb and he kind yeah. of botched it. Yeah. But uh, there were there were pretty cool moments. Like uh, Cesaro's going to get thrown into the rope, so he like flips over it and stays in. And then Big E comes out of nowhere and spears him and uh, <laughs> yeah. Cesaro to the floor. Oh, it was it was brutal. Someone shouted "Holy mackerel!" at one point, and that was hilarious. Really? Yeah, I think it was JBL. I can't be certain though. I I don't have that. I have that the crowd were chanting, "This is awesome!" And Xavier Woods shouted back, "Yeah, we know." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great at just shouting shit. He is. He's so he's good. A real asshole. He really is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tyson Kidd almost kills Kofi Kingston with a massive drop kick. Like uh, Kofi jumps from the top rope, and Tyson oh, Kidd jumps yeah. like ten foot into the air and hits him. Yeah, it was awesome. It looked pretty brutal. I have that written down, but I couldn't remember how that actually played out, so I didn't want to mention it. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> well, you can mention that Kofi botched the New Day's finisher where he missed Tyson Kidd completely. I didn't I didn't know what was happening at the end there. I didn't well, entirely understand it. Well this is only the second four, like uh, Biggie has him up on his shoulder and uh Kofi jumps from the rope and he's supposed to land onto or at least put his arms onto uh Tyson Kidd and knock him to the floor. Oh, he misses. Yeah. yeah. It didn't look great, but uh that's the second four, New Day get that. Uh Cesaro, who manages to get back onto the ring after getting that brutal spear, gets a hot tag and he starts clearing house, like uppercutting Kofi like five, six times. Yeah. And then it was weird, he went for a pin 
didn't get, like, Kofi kicked out. And then Tyson Kidd jumps into the ring, and then he goes for a pin. And then JBL's like, Tyson's the legal man. Yeah. But, but they didn't, they didn't tag. It was, it was really weird. No. It's like I, that I, awful, yeah. uh, WrestleMania tag match. Where you didn't know who the fuck was legal. No. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, there was, there's a lot of cool moments. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty interesting. What about Some when shitty Ty- ones, though. Tyson Kidd got thrown over the ropes and he landed on Cesaro's back and flipped back in. I did not notice that. Oh, Sounds Tyson Kidd awesome. and Cesaro are so fucking good together. It's insane. They are. It's. Uh, I did enjoy it quite a bit. I just don't yeah. like the New Day, which I guess is the point now. Yeah, you're not supposed to like them. What What did you think of the ending for this? I thought it was awesome. I just don't. I just like watching them. You know. I thought how the, how they play out as people is really interesting, but. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So the ending of this is. I think Tyson Kidd's distracted. And then yeah. Xavier Woods rolls in and gets the pin because the ref doesn't see who it is. He thinks it's Kofi. Yeah, so, I didn't even like, know what was happening here. Apparently, apparently to the WWE, all black people look the same. So I thought it was vaguely racist, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was vaguely racist too. But whatever, it's America, it's fine. Yeah, so what, what did you give this match? Come on. I gave it a 3 out of 5 because I didn't... Uh... <laughs> what? Because there was like several moments where shit was clearly botched, and it was like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I understand. I I only gave this. It was three it was good, but I didn't think it was amazing. And then with those mistakes, it was like. I gave this three and three quarter stars. How was that so much different than my three out of five? Uh, because on your rating system, Sheamus and Ziggler got four stars, and this because it was less. a better match. It was way more interesting. No, it wasn't. This was a better match. It took less time. <laughs> and there was more blood, therefore better. That's how we work. <laughs> Unlike this next piece of shit, which is Bray Wyatt versus Ryback. Oh, hang on a second. Before we go into that, there was a backstage interview afterwards where uh, the New Day are celebrating drinking milk out of champagne glasses. Yeah. Weird. And uh, I think it's Tom Phillips. I, I think that's the guy's name. I don't remember. The one who seems to change size every single time he interviews people. But uh, uh, he was yeah, talking yeah. about the tag match at the Elimination Chamber. And I think he said that there's going to be six teams in it. Jesus. Which, because originally I thought it would be three teams, you know, one one team in both pods, and then two members of one team in the ring, and then their partners in pods, so it would only be six people. But no, there's going to be a 12-man elimination chamber. Is this going to be really shitty? Is it going to be like, a, a, there's a Lost Matadors and shit? Well, do you want to know who's part of this that happened on Raw? Uh, yeah, I would like it to be the fucking Lucha Dragons, okay. but I know I'm going so, to be disappointed. So, uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro had a rematch against the New Day on the Raw after Payback, and they lost again. Ugh. Through some through some interference, I think, I don't remember. So right. then, I can't remember the order, but essentially, the Ascension, no, the Ascension run down and start attacking people, and then the Lucha Dragons run down. Awesome. And then Los Matadores run down. Really? And then the Primetime Players run down. Who? Oh, uh, Darren Young and... And uh, Titus O'Neil. So they are the six teams in the Elimination Chamber. The New Day, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, Los Matadores, the Lucha Dragons, Primetime Players, and the Ascension. Is that all the teams? Yep, that's the main roster. No, like, the Usos are dead. Have you noticed how great the tag division has been since the Usos are dead? Yeah, it's been interesting. It's been some of the better matches each uh, pay-per-view. I am really dreading when whichever Uso is hurt comes back, because then it's going to be another year of Uso craziness. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Gotta <sighs> get the Lucha Dragons up there, gotta get some Kalisto. Is Sin Cara still shit, or is he, like, happy again now? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I assume he's still, like, depressed, because he's here, partners with his replacement, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I guess he's back in the main roster, though, isn't he? But you're putting off the inevitable, which is this amazing Bray Wyatt-Ryback match. I know you oh, want to talk about it. Oh, fuck this match. My first note is, why is this happening... Uh, I don't really have any notes other than Ryback shouting ah really loudly every time <laughs> something's happening. It's fucking really distracting. So, uh, uh, so Bray, Bray Wyatt <laughs> has the coolest entrance in WWE right now. Have you seen it? If it comes yeah. out pitch black, people's phones up in the air. Yeah. He has that really spooky nameplate now because apparently the Undertaker like absorbed his soul, so now he's super spooky. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to Ryback, who comes out and has absolutely no reaction. 
<laughs> like the crowd don't do any through this entire match people are chanting let's go Wyatt and the only reason they're chanting that is because nobody cares about Ryback here no I, I never have he's a this, I'm pretty sure the build up for shit. this match was Bray Wyatt Bray Wyatt's rambled on about attacking somebody soon and then a week before <laughs> this pay per view Bray Wyatt attacked Ryback and now they're having a match <laughs> yeah uh, see, to me, Ryback is like the uh, shitter version of the Big Show, which is saying something. Wow. Where it's like, the Big Show can look sad and has something going for him, whereas Ryback is nothing. And, yeah. yeah. Come on, I, I like the big guy, but, yeah, this was an absolutely pointless match. Uh, I don't really have any notes in this whatsoever, other than Ryback's dumb fucking moaning. Uh, Bray Wyatt jumps from the ring, or jumps from outside the ring onto Ryback, who's laying out on the floor. And I think he broke one of his ribs because on Raw afterwards he was all taped up and injured. Right, like so deliberately, you... like in in fucking reality or in the fake wrestling reality. In kayfabe, I think I think it was in kayfabe. I'm not too right. sure. Right. But uh, yeah, this this match is completely forgettable. There was an almost yep. there was a ten count almost where they both got cu- counted out, and I would have sighed even louder than I already did. <laughs> uh. I heard the ref at one point shout, or tell them two minutes, and then they <laughs> carried on fighting for like another five minutes. Weird. But, Weird. Uh, yeah, this is dumb. Ryback hits a top rope splash, and the fucking commentary team lose their shit over it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, the payoff for this match is the turnbuckle cover gets pulled off, and Bray Wyatt throws Ryback's injured ribs into it, and hits him with a sister Abigail to win. Yeah. I gave this a one out of five. I gave this a one and three quarters. You're fucking insane. <laughs> it it wasn't bad necessarily. It was shit. It was the worst. In fact, if if it's if a match is boring in wrestling, it's worse than it being abjectly terrible. This was a higher rating than the fucking Meta Powers versus the Ascension match, which I enjoyed. <laughs> well, that's clearly your fucking fucking what is it? Meltzer Meta Tab scale or whatever. Meltzer is completely off. Uh, do you want to know what happened on Raw afterwards involving these two? No, I don't. Do you so, want to tell me? So uh, Bray Wyatt had a match against Dean Ambrose, I think, and he beat right. Dean Ambrose, of course. Oh. Why wouldn't he? And Ryback came out and challenged Sheamus to a match. And now what he, the fuck? He is in the Elimination Chamber for the Intercontinental Championship, along with Why? Sheamus. Why? Why? Yep. Let's move on before I get upset. Move on to fucking hell, this match. <laughs> you know what? I, I, was scrolled down, I scrolled down my paper and just saw the title of this, and I... Oh, fuck off. You know, I've hated every single time these people have been matched up, but I enjoyed this one. I believe you're talking about this I Quit match for the WWE United States Championship between John Cena and Rusev, who is with Lana. It's really good. It's really good. It's fucking really not. It's really good. The match get starts and Rusev asks if Cena wants to quit already. Damn straight. Why? I was hoping you would, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This fucking match. So, it's, uh, it's fucking really good. This is like the best wrestling they've done in the last six months. It was so... This is so dumb. The crowd <laughs> immediately start chanting, We want Lana. So Rusev orders her to sit beside yeah. the, Jerry the King Lawler, which is probably the most torture... Ever? <laughs> Did you see his face when she sat down? Did He's you like see him take animals. a quick perv at her before the camera panned away? No, I didn't. It was just him staring <laughs> at her when I saw her. It was weird, but I didn't see her. Like, what was he trying to do? Get some upskirt or something? I don't know. It's like when uh, Paige had to sit beside him and <laughs> like clear camera shots of him looking at Paige's ass as she sits down. <laughs> it was like that. Oh, these people are the worst. These people uh, are the worst. Yeah, so this fucking referee, I think it was Mike Chioda, decides to ask John if he quits every 10 seconds of this match. It was wonderful. It was oh. really good. I think it's super dumb having a live microphone in the hands of a ref inside the ring when you have John Cena in the ring, who is the loudest person in the world at calling spots in the match. <laughs> like, even, That's a fair point, isn't it? <laughs> even when he's not mic'd up, you still hear him pick up on the cameras or the microphones yeah. under the ring. So having a live microphone beside him at all times is probably the worst <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I never noticed that. But so uh, 
Do you want to talk about this fucking match? I don't. Uh, I, I really liked it. I don't know. I've got I've got words written down on this page. None of them really mean much to me. There was some have... sick spinning heel kick by Russo, which <laughs> is cool. Because his feet are really cool. It's great that he doesn't wear shoes. You don't even like feet, but you like Russo. I like it that he's different. And the, hey, fuck, that man can bellow. Like, in various languages. It's really great. He's great, yeah. I, I only uh, wonder how John Cena will overcome these odds. Um, I'm trying to remember how the match played out and not getting very far. I remember everything after they leave the ring. Do you have that uh, he hit the AA on the 5,000 pound stairs? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then he picks up the 10 trillion pound stairs and throws it at Rusev. <laughs> Wasn't I there fucking... quite a few moments on the stairs? Yeah, just... and I, I fucking hate every single time John Cena goes to the stairs because he does it like, you never watched before, uh, was it Hell in a Cell 2014? That's when you started watching? That sounds about right. Every match John Cena had with Bray Wyatt, he would pick up the stairs and he would throw it out the ring like he did at Rusev. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the first first time seeing it, it was kind of cool. But then he does it every single time as like a, test, a show of strength and it's just so boring. Yeah. At least Rusev yeah. like ducked out the way this time. Bray, Bray Wyatt just took it in the face every single time. That seems like it'd be really sore. Like, you know, if you get one of the sharp edges or something. Not necessarily yeah. that it's heavy, just like, you know, flying metal object at your face. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's probably not great. There was that weird fucking spot where Rusev's, like, sitting on the barricade, and John Cena, who is the good guy, remember, pulls out, gets a microphone, and shouts, and starts threatening Rusev to quit, or he's gonna put him through a wall. Oh, yeah. So yeah. then he... Then Rusev, <laughs> Rusev just goes no, and then he goes and spears him through a wall and starts celebrating. Yeah. What a good guy! <laughs> like, yeah, what Cena's the fuck? Weird. What the fuck is wrong with Cena? Every time the referee asks Rusev if he wants to quit, Rusev's like, you know, in pain or like super tired and worn out, saying no or yet or whatever he says. And every yeah. time, every time he asks John Cena, he'd be like, John, do you want to quit? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. He just no sold any sort of like tiredness or injury he's supposed to have. You're right. the uh, The first time he was down, right at the very beginning of the match, he was worse off then than he was at the very end. Yeah, which is uh, I don't know. I enjoyed it. It's dumb. Oh, it was so dumb. It's even more dumb that they start going into the crowds. That was great. They, they reach was a great. table with like computers and stuff, and you can see a Mac that has its battery pulled out. You said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But at least it's plugged in. Like at least they made that much effort. It was the uh, weird, uh, the weird moment where the camera just like flicks to John Cena for a second of him like typing on the keyboard with this black screen, and then he just like fucking closes the laptop and whacks him on the back with it. It's really yeah. weird. That was that was dumb. I also thought it was dumb that they get the table and they set it up for an Alabama slammer and they botch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> fucking Rusev runs to like stop this table from falling over. <laughs> Yeah, it was really they, good. At least they hit, they they went for a second Alabama slammer and they hit him through the table. Yeah, or you know, Rusev they, hit Cena through the table. Sorry. To Rusev's credit, he's fucking really good at like selling that he's in pain. He is. He's fu- Rusev is amazing. Like he just screams and bellows and writhes in pain after this monitor's hit him, which yeah. I imagine would be pretty sore. You know, the whip yeah, of the monitor. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm also sure it's really painful being thrown into the pyrotechnics and having it explode on you. Oh, that was so because awesome. Just remember, so awesome. John Cena is a good guy, and he just tried to murder Rusev by throwing <laughs> him into the pyrotechnics. <laughs> tried to set him on fire, yeah. <laughs> they, they've done this spot, like, a few times. I think Randy Orton tried to kill John Cena with pyro years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's always cool when it happens. It was. It was. <laughs> the referee, like, j- fucking Rusev's almost died. The referee runs up to him, do you want to quit? And he goes, No. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking almost died. He, sh- he should be like burnt. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. no, I- I'm not going to quit from that. <laughs> yeah, th- that's when uh, Cena grabs the uh, the barricade that had like a curtain over it, doesn't he? Yeah, he goes to the side, the barricade away from the crowds. And I was hoping the crowd would just go and run through it and start attacking Cena. See, I didn't think that he did. I thought it was just a barricade that was there because he pulls like a cover off it and doesn't seem to unhook it or anything. Just walks away. So I assumed it would have been like. You know, hooked up if it was part of the crowd. Probably, yeah. I I didn't get a good look at it. Yeah, and that it, was kind of weird. It was kind of awkward. 
the way he it ran looks, at him. It looks uh, painful, like Rusev, I think he German suplex Cena through the barricade as it leans on the ring. Oh, yeah. That yeah. looked quite painful. But again, the, roof, the ref runs up to him, do you want to quit? And he goes, hell no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was <sighs> dumb. It was really good. It was. So uh, the, cl- the closing part of this match, uh, Rusev hit, puts Cena into the accolades and Cena passes out. And yeah. the commentator's like, John Cena's passed out. What happens now? And the camera pulls to him and you see him with his eyes open. Like mouthing something to Rusev. <laughs> I didn't notice. I didn't notice at all. Oh, it's so dumb. Yeah. So then, uh, then Rusev decides to pull out the Umaga spots when he unhooks the rope from one of the turnbuckles yeah. and goes to put uh, John Cena into the accolade with the rope. Yeah, John Cena, weird. of course, reverses it and puts Rusev into the STF with the rope. Yeah. Exactly what he did to Umaga, who is this big Samoan. Rest in peace, dead guy now. Yeah, years ago. So then, it was really <sighs> shitty too. Like it did not look as if it was an effective weapon at any point. Yeah, it's fucking John Cena's STF is always really loose, and everybody calls him out on it, and he never does anything to fix it. And now yeah. with the rope, it looks even dumber. It was dumb. It was like just like, two slack bits of rope, and then this thing held about an inch in front of Rusev's face. It's like uh, on Rusev's eyes. It's like nothing <laughs> at the neck. <laughs> 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 But, uh, yeah, Rusev's, like, writhing in pain, screaming in Bulgarian. Apparently he, somebody translated it, and he was saying, like, I give up, I give up. Stop yeah. hurting me. Why are you still hurting me? <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> then Larnham runs in and says that he quits, and John Cena celebrates with the American flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that flag, dude, it's really bad, but I love that it's there. Uh... It's so dumb. It is. It's like, the... <laughs> but I bet people think it's like patriotic and awesome. Like that's the thing. They do. That's it's because it's Americans. <laughs> yeah. What What did you give this match? I gave it a four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked it. That's fine. I gave it three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. That pyro spot was amazing. And the fucking Mac without a battery is maybe my favorite thing yeah. in wrestling this year. Oh, do you want to know what happened af- on the Raw afterwards involving these two? Yeah, go on. So, uh, John Cena is out there talking about how he's given prestige back to the United States Championship and it belongs to all of the people in the crowd and all of the people in the US. And issues an open challenge and motherfucking Kevin Owens comes down with his NXT Championship. Yep. Uh, he starts saying, like, uh, John, I'm sure you know who I am and if people here don't know who I am, then they're not worth my time. <laughs> and basically just basically just starts shitting on people. Like he came out with not a massive reaction. Like no, there was a I bunch of cheers, not. but like nobody really knew who he was, which is a shame. I bet if that was like the uh role after WrestleMania though, it would have been a different situation. Oh fucking yes. Like you, you heard the reaction Neville or the Lucha Dragons got. Yeah. It was yeah. insane. Like there were NXT chants when he was in there, but they weren't massive. Yeah. But uh yeah, yeah. Kevin Owens comes down. He starts like shitting on Cena, and Cena's talking about. He starts saying like, uh, "You know, you're finally here, and I can see that you're scared." And basically, just starts talking <laughs> down to Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens just says, "John, I've been wrestling for 15 years, longer than you. You don't give me <laughs> advice." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yeah, that's, so, I need to watch that. I saw it on Twitter and was super psyched about it. But oh, it's it's really good. I lost my shit when he came down. Yeah, but uh, it's, he's weird though, isn't he? Because he doesn't look like a normal wrestler, and he doesn't talk like one either. It's it's really bizarre. Like he doesn't necessarily sound good on a microphone, but is that I like just because of there. his accents? I just think he sounds really like a uh, monotone. You know, I think that's just because of the French Canadian accent he's got. Possibly, but it's you know it is weird to hear. But I think he's really good at when he does it. Yeah, or has uh, been on NXT anyway. I haven't watched this. Yeah. uh Essentially, he comes down there, starts shitting on Cena. Cena talks about how you know he, the open challenge is still there for him, and he's like, "No, I'm a prize fighter. I'll we will fight one day, but it'll be on my terms." And right. then he goes to leave. He kicks Cena in the gut, throws him into the ropes, and gives him a pop-up power bomb, and just <laughs> lays him out in the ring on his debut. That's awesome. And then he That's picks awesome. up his NXT Championship and the US title throws the US title on the floor, stomps on it, and then gives John Cena the you can't see me and walks out. Yeah, I saw the last bit, yeah. 
it's, oh, it's uh, fucking great. Like, it's fucking Tina great. spent like five minutes building up the title and talking about how important it is to all the people here and how much big important it is to him. Yeah. And then fucking Kevin Owens comes down and stomps on it and walks out after laying out <laughs> Cena. That's great. That's and great. then uh, later on in the show, he's talk. Kevin Owens is talking to Triple H backstage, and he says that he is challenging John Cena to a match at uh, Elimination Chamber for the US title. Awesome. Which has Does that been... mean he'll be moving out of like NXT properly then? See, I heard that he's going to have a re- he was going to have a really short time in NXT, much like yeah. Balor. But Balor's been down there for like six months now. Right. Like, Kevin Owens apparently is selling lots of merchandise, and he's, like, one of the people that are ready to move up, but, tri- like, Triple H had an a investor's call a few, like, a day ago, I think it was, and he was basically saying there's a lot of people ready to move up from NXT now, but there's no places for them on the main roster yet. No. No. Because, like, you, you can imagine there's probably, like, ten people, really, that are ready to move up. Yeah, I, I would argue that like most of the main roster is like misused as it is. So what are you going to do with like yeah. know, six more or something? That's that's a like problem. I can't I can't see uh what's his name fucking Prince Pretty. What's his actual name? Tyler Breeze. Tyler I Breeze. couldn't see him on the main roster. I don't know that he would work in his current incarnation at the minute. Maybe not. Well, that's the whole thing. Like he said that stuff down in NXT works, but it doesn't work on the main roster, and that's yeah. what they have to kind of prepare for. I think Tyler Breeze would be great if you had him debut on a Raw somewhere in Canada, wherever he's from. I don't know what part of Canada he's from. You know, they would lose their minds because they're seeing someone from their hometown out there. He could be a good, like, cocky chicken shit, or not chicken shit, like a big cocky heel in the mid-card. You could make some, like, super hot allegiance between him and fucking Dolph Ziggler and Lana because they made out on TV or something, didn't they? That's, That's what I was about to move on to, yeah, but I, I think yeah. Tyler None of that would work, though, would it? It, really? it makes me wonder what's going to happen on NXT Unstoppable now, because if Kevin Owens loses to Sami Zayn, then surely he's going to beat John Cena at Elimination Chamber? Why? Well, yeah. But if he I loses, know, then yeah. what's going to happen? Is that the match, is it, for uh, Unstoppable, him and Sami Zayn? Yes. Right. But, but I thought that Sami Zayn's been ready to move up for a long time as well. Yeah. He, is he actually injured, or was it just like a brief thing with Zarm? No, he was actually injured, and he went for surgery, then he came back and got hurt against uh, Cena again. Yeah, that's what I meant. Is he okay now, though? Yeah, he's been cleared for Unstoppable. Right. Itami is out for Unstoppable. He's not going to be there. Yeah. Oh, he's not going to wrestle. He will be there. Right. Uh, they just released a new shirt, actually, and it's kind of super racist. Is it, like, like vaguely Asian? It's super Asian with Japanese... Uh, <laughs> kanji on there and it's red and white with like the rising sun weird even though weird, he wears colors yellow. yellow and black yeah, yeah. That's, but uh anyway i'm getting off topic anyway yeah that's what happens with uh, john cena Rusev are you telling kick- me that nxt is more interesting than the main roster yes i'm so looking forward <laughs> to watching nxt unstoppable tonight but uh <laughs> yeah. so I, rusev so I. rusev came down and basically fired lana and told her to go away and then later on in the show, after Dolph Ziggler had a match, she came down and started making or kissing Dolph Ziggler like twice. Yep. And then Rusev came down and uh, started to attack Dolph Ziggler. How did that end up? Dolph Ziggler laid him out and walked away with Lana. Awesome. That's great. So I don't know what the fuck's happening there. That's great. Let's. Should we move on? Ugh. Yeah. To the great tag team match with Naomi and Tamina Snooker. Versus the Bella Twins, Brie Bella and Nikki Bella. I've never seen Tamina Snooker. I didn't know she was a person until about two days ago. <laughs> but she looked like a fucking cyberpunk badass. It was really cool. Oh, That's all know, of my notes. Moving on. You know how you give Divas a chance. You don't defend their title on a pay-per-view. Instead, you put them in this fucking shitty tag match. <laughs> what what happened here? At, what Talk to me about this match, because I don't know what happened at the end. I don't really... Do you, do you want to know all my notes? Okay. Yes. Yep. Alabama Slammer asked base offense, it's over? Question mark. Mine is the commentary. Male commentary is terrible. They're talking about giving women a makeover in the Divas. Really? Yeah. I'm... So... <sighs> if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Naomi pins Nikki Bella using her ass. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure that somebody was pinned during this match too. It's really astute. 
What, what did uh, you give this match? Observation. I gave it a 2 out of 5. <laughs> 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 there was some cool flip uh, by Naomi, and Tamina Snuka looked badass, even though she didn't really do much. Uh, I gave this a 1 star. Uh, it's better than, like, uh, I don't know. It was, it was bad. I can't remember. <laughs> it was pretty awful, yeah. I... Uh, so was the next match, really. It was vaguely slightly better. Yeah, Not singles much. match between King, Bad News Barrett, and Neville. I like the ending. I didn't really like the match. So, uh, yeah, uh, there was some weird botched... Like, there was a lot of botches in this match. Oh, or, like, yeah, that rope thing with uh, Neville. Yeah, and also, like, uh, Barrett went to kick Neville, who was on the ropes, and he just completely missed him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there was that weird thing where Neville tried to, like... Jump up onto the ropes and put his like legs over it, and he missed, and then he went for it immediately afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of awkward because you could see. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could see uh, Barrett just standing there, couldn't you, at the end, like off the side of the camera? Yeah, didn't know what he was doing. It was weird. There was a really there were some cool moments though where like Neville, uh, Neville jumps off the top rope. Bad news, Barrett goes to hit him with the bull hammer, and he turns it into an arm drag and just tosses him across the ring. Yeah. It was yeah. a really, really awesome. Was good. Uh, was, Neville uh, is once again selling his knee. Like Barrett keeps attacking his knee. Yeah. Why do uh, they do that? Why don't they mix it up a bit? Well, it's because he's a high flyer, so you take out his legs, you take out his aerial offense. Yeah, but why don't you make him like punch him in the ear or something? Because he's got like big ear, big nose, and shit. He make it more like, interesting than just a knee. He looks like a fucking Titan from Attack on Titan. It's awesome. He's really cool. He's really cool. He is, yeah. But the uh, the ending to this match wasn't cool. Bad News Barrett gets counted out. Yeah. Because why not? Obviously, he's now winner of the King of the Rings, so of course he's going to lose to Neville via count outs. Yeah. Uh, he goes to walk away, runs back in, and to attack Neville, who gives him a dead... He gives him a deadlift suplex and breaks his scepter in two. It was awesome. And then hits cool. the red arrow. Yeah. I enjoyed that there was like a fucking a moment of Barrett like swinging this scepter as if it was like a weapon or like a mace or something. Yeah. Which was kind of dumb. I, I, I quite enjoyed the end. I gave well, this one a three out of five. I gave this a two and a half. Eh, pretty much the same. Yeah. Pretty much uh, the same. What happened on the Raw after this? I think Barrett was confirmed to be in the Elimination Chamber match for the Intercontinental Championship. And now Neville is feuding with Bo Dallas. Great. I'll go places. Oh, I'll bring, they... in the, uh, bring in the ratings. Uh, Adrian Neville, back in NXT, defeated Bo Dallas for the NXT Championship in a ladder match. Bo Dallas held the championship? Yes. Seth what? Rollins, Big E, uh, Bo Dallas, they're all former NXT champions. Uh, Rollins, I knew. Uh, Big E? Really? Yeah, Big, Big E lost it to uh, Bo Dallas. Was this before NXT was good? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not rate Big E amongst the uh, the greats, to be honest. Big E's awesome. He, he's awesome uh, when he does like things involving his weight and being thrown by Cesaro. That's about it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, fucking Neville and Bodellis now, great. Yeah, great. Moving yeah, well, on. Well, that's never going to make it onto a pay per view, so whatever. I won't see it. Oh no, that'll totally be Elimination Chamber. It'll be like the opening match. How long is Elimination Chamber, have they said? No. I, I assume it'll be three hours, like an actual pay-per-view. What? Oh yeah. my god. No. Elimination Chambers take a long time, you know. They shouldn't. They should be half an hour of goodness. And, like, cut out all the bullshit. Probably, I either yeah. wrestling and just have half an hour of promos <laughs> and wrestler entrances. Alright, do you want to move on to the uh, the main attraction here? The Fatal 4-Way match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, where if Seth Rollins loses or fails to retain the championship, Kane will be fired from being the director of operations. Right. It has Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose versus Randy Orton. Yeah. yeah. Now, I want to put, point out that JoJo, the, uh, I guess the announcer for them coming into the ring? Yeah. I don't know what to call her. They She called them Brandy Orton, <laughs> Dean, <laughs> Dean Ambrose, Roman Rhett, Sorry, it's drowned out by booze and you can't actually hear Reigns. <laughs> and then Seth Rollins. She's really good. I like her. She is. Did Was it last last week with the cool dude on NXT? 
who was like going at it as if it was like a darts match or something. It was awesome. I haven't watched last week's NXT. Yeah, you need to. It's a great a ring announcer. I don't know. Whatever you want to call them. They're I, really I, good. They're really I good. Know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> They're the best part of this match. <laughs> I took it back. It was good. Yeah. I, I like that Roman Reigns got booed the fuck out of as soon as his name got spoken. Yep. But I'm I surprised mean, they still make him walk in through the crowd because surely he must get shit thrown at him now. <laughs> oh, I, I'm waiting to see the wank pheasant sign again. <laughs> that's like the best yeah. sign. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's got to be in our game, uh, wrestler of the year top moments. Wank pheasant. Best sign awesome. of the year. Wank pheasant sign of the year. 2015. Yeah. That's going to be the only sign that we remember. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so the match begins. J and J security rush in and start taking out uh, everybody except for Seth Rollins. Yeah, there's like a bun- fucking J and J take out Roman Reigns and leave him on the floor, which is kind of funny. <laughs> These two cruiserweights taking out Roman Reigns. Yeah, but essentially there's a bunch of dives. Like Seth Rollins jumps out and dives at Randy Orton, and then Dean Ambrose runs out and dives at the two of them, and then Roman Reigns runs and dives at them. <laughs> there was some really good fake camera punching you know where the camera shakes all over the place it was really yeah. good it was really good you couldn't see a thing so the, the punching looked good well that's all <laughs> I didn't I don't notice the fake punching like you do I fucking hate it so unless the camera is like going all over the place I can't deal with it I noticed that everybody is wearing their logo in the ring will I? yeah Seth Rollins notice. has his logo on his belt Dean Ambrose has a shirt I, with yeah, his I logo his. on it Roman Reigns has his vest. Randy Orton has... Is that just his logo, his vest? I wear clothes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he got rid of the horrible just black thing, and now he's wearing a blue one with the awful Roman Reigns logo on it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the crowd start chanting Let's Go Justice after um, Roman Reigns and Ambrose like team up and start doing fist bumps to each other. Yeah, that was weird. I think it, I think it was Fun, really I guess. cool that... Uh, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose were teaming up because technically they're still friends. Like Seth yeah. Rollins betrayed them. Yeah. There was a few moments in this match where they act as friends. Yeah, it was, they did pretty well, I thought. With some yeah. cool butts. I love that Kane was in a suit and I'm like, Kane looks awesome in a suit. He should always be in a suit. You know, keep that f- fucking dumb mask off him. Don't make him take off his shirt. Really? Then like a moment after I write that on the page, he takes off his shirt. I'm so pissed off. See, everyone on the internet is like, why the fuck is Kane wearing a sh- uh, suit? He should have the mask again. No, no, he should stay in the suit. He looks better in the suit when you can't see his like pale fucking man tits. So <laughs> he should never not be wearing a suit. Wow. He, he looks like an angry, like overweight executive. Mm. So he should stay that way. I was, uh, I was confused at one point. Like Seth Rollins hits the power bomb and then hits him with the weird super kick, which right. he used as a finisher on SmackDown once. Because now, <laughs> now that the curb stomp's banned, I was like, wait, is that? Is that his finisher? But then no, he just somebody kicks out of it with no problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kane, at one point, uh, sorry, go on. No, you go ahead. I was going to say at one point, Randy Orton just fucking destroys Roman Reigns, like walks into him outside the ring. I don't think anyone noticed it on the commentary or anything, but they were they're walking around the outside, and Randy Orton just walks into him and flattens him in seconds. Oh, he really hits him weird. with like a clothesline. Yeah, I yeah. Saw it just looked awkward though from where the camera was. It was it was really cool. Yeah. It looked as if he wasn't prepared for it at all. It was great. Uh, Kane starts getting PTSD because, and he starts getting triggered because he can't DQ the match. So he rushes in <laughs> and starts attacking people. Yeah. Uh, then, like a bunch of bullshit happens. Randy Orton pulls off the covers of the American announce table, and JBL shouts, "There's a spa- the, the Spanish tables over there." <laughs> yeah, he says, "Oh come on, the Spanish tables are here." Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. But, uh, I was, yeah, oh, <laughs> that's what commentary should be, you know. Yeah. Good. He's the only. He's the only one on there that can like pull out those kind of lines. <laughs> that's why I'm JBL. <laughs> that's why I'm convinced that the holy mackerel was him from earlier on. Probably, yeah. Yeah. But uh, essentially, Randy Orton opens up the table and he's trying to put somebody through it. I don't remember. And then the shields, or well, I guess they're not the shields anymore. Roman Reigns, uh, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose all look at each other, start to attack Randy Orton together. And yeah. the crowd go fucking nuts at like this mini shield reunion. It was awesome. Yeah, it was good. My notes here are in full capitals. It's happening! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation <laughs> mark! Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, the shields start clearing house. Look at the table and set up for a triple power bomb and put Randy Orton through the American table. Yeah. And then they all start losing their minds. Like Roman Reigns just starts screaming. 
<laughs> Dean Ambrose yeah. starts like putting out his tongue and like throwing his head up in the air. <laughs> uh, Seth Rollins starts moshing with one of the chairs beside the table. He just starts like throwing it to the ground. <laughs> Weird. Uh, but yeah, it, oh, it was a fucking really cool moment. Like it was. Seth Rollins just slides in between uh, Ambrose and Roman, and like he, he puts his arms around them and they all look happy at each other. And he puts out his fist like they used to do in the Shields. And yeah. they're all looking happy at him, and then they both just put on this, like, flat, dead expression and stare at him. <laughs> it, was, it was really awesome. It really was. It's a fucking... See, I was never super into the Shield. I started watching around WrestleMania 30, so I only had two months of the Shield from WrestleMania to Payback is when I yeah. experienced them, and then the night after Payback, uh, Seth Rollins betrayed the Shields. Yeah. I so only I know the most of people with a really bad theme tune. Oh, that theme tune's really cool. Fucking sucks ass. It's Roman Reigns' theme, because obviously he is the shield himself now. <laughs> because he sucks ass like the theme tune did. Yep. So, uh... They throw... Uh, Ambrose and Reigns throw Seth onto the table. Start the Spanish the table, yeah. Yeah, they start attacking the Spanish table. And then they try to double power bomb Kane through the table. But it must have been a Japanese table because it doesn't break. <laughs> yeah. The two of them just kind of look at each other and all of the crowd start chanting one more time at them. So yeah, I wondered up... if this was planned or not. I assumed it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't think so. So then they pick up Kane and put him through the table a second time. Yeah, it was great. It was really good. Uh, with Kane, Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins laid out, Roman and Dino look at each other smile and say like oh losers buy the beer and then they run into the ring and start having a match between the two of them yeah which I thought was really cool it's like again it was, they're it was good. showing that they're friends I like that when they were punching every time Dean Ambrose hit it was yes the crowd chanted every time Roman Reigns hit it was a boo yeah I don't know if you noticed it was awesome <laughs> it was did you see Roman Reigns hit the Sin Cara bomb to Dean Ambrose no I didn't but... where he picks him up like he goes for a pin and then he just picks him up from the ground and hits him into a power bomb. Actually, yeah, I have that written down. But I was like, mine was like two lines of me trying to explain it to myself, and yours just like, oh yeah, it was this move. Which it, is... <laughs> it was literally the, that's what Sin Cara's move is, and Roman Reigns is doing it. Yeah, it's cool. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool. I like that the entire time they were fighting, every time one of them kicks out of the other's pin, the other's just kind of smiling because it's like it's not a blood feud between the two of them. It's like to see who's the best. And it's like a friendly competition between the two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was good. Like, like uh, Roman hits him with the Superman punch. Dean kicks out at two, and uh, he like Roman Reigns gets up and just starts smiling and nodding his head at Dean. Yeah. He uh, he then hits. I think he yeah he hits the Ambrose with a spear and Seth Rollins saves it. And my note here is thank you Seth because I <laughs> thought that Roman Reigns was winning it right there. It's fucking really weird, because then Seth Rollins goes running around the hand uh, around the ring on his hands and knees, which was kind of weird. Yeah. It was, was, uh, it really was bizarre. It was awesome, but bizarre. Uh, Dean Ambrose hits Seth Rollins with the dirty deeds, and Kane runs in to try and DQ again, yeah. because oh, Kane reminds me of Senator Armstrong from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. <laughs> like, you know, just shirt off, kind of shaved yeah. head, fucking ruins sure. everything. Sure, yeah. That's why he should uh, stay in the shirts, and then he can. He should just be renamed. Like, forget that his name is Kane. Reimagine yeah. him. Put him in NXT or something as Senator Armstrong. <laughs> well, he so is like super into politics and stuff is like he? that. Yeah. Weird. I uh, guess that's not surprising. I don't know. Yeah, let's fucking wrap this up. Uh, at some point, uh, Sephiroth jumps off the top rope into Randy Orton and hits him with a power slam, which looked so fucking smooth. It was insane. Yeah, Randy yeah. Orton is great in the ring. He really but, is. Uh, the the match ends when Seth Rollins hits Randy Orton with a pedigree and gets the free count. Yeah, yeah. And it then, was uh, fucking really good. It was, match. He Seth Rollins kind of runs away and Ripple Heach comes down and raises Seth's hands. Yeah, which is it's really cool. Like the idea that Seth is now Triple Heach is like protege and he's there giving like letting him use his finishing move. I thought you were going to say bitch then. I was like, yeah, damn right. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, what what did you rate this match? I gave it a four out of five. I gave it three and three quarters. You're just like vicious. 
I was not going to rate this match over the tag match, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, the tag match had mistakes. Like This had really well pulled off moments. I guess, but... Also, no. it still wasn't as good as bleeding uh, Dolph Ziggler, so there you go. <laughs> uh, what happened on the Raw after this? Well, Roman Reigns wasn't there. Because, right. you know, why wouldn't he be? But he was at the SmackDown, and I've read what happens at SmackDown. And even though Elimination Chamber is the next pay per view coming up, Roman Reigns announced that he would be in the Money in the Bank match at Money in the Bank. Why? <laughs> Why? Don't give him a chance. Fuck's sake. He was in last year's Money in the Bank, too. Ah, at least he didn't win that one. Oh, no, he hmm. was in the title ladder match, which John Cena won. So is he in Elimination Chamber? I, I don't know. I don't think so. He's got to uh, be. Randy Orton didn't do anything at Payback. Uh, sorry, Raw. Uh, there was a celebration for Seth Rollins at the end of the show. Dean Ambrose came down and got in the ring with like all of the authority and then started to attack uh, Seth Rollins and then brought him outside and put his head on cinder blocks <laughs> and threatened to like crash his skull with a chair if uh, he didn't give him a match at the Elimination Chamber. <laughs> So is that a match then at the Elimination Chamber? I don't know, because like I said, he had Severon's head under his foot on these cinder blocks with a chair in his hand, and then uh, Stephanie McMahon's like, okay, you got your match, just put down the chair. And then Dean Ambrose looks down at Seth, and he goes to swing the chair anyway, and yeah. somebody grabs the chair and stops him. <laughs> so I assume that they have a match, but, like, you know, fucking who knows. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be really cool. But uh, yeah, that's that's Payback 2015. I think it was better than Extreme Rules. It's been better than like... It doesn't have the spectacle of WrestleMania, obviously, but I think it was like a better show than pretty much all of the last few pay-per-views. People are calling the upcoming uh, Elimination Chamber pay-per-view uh, WrestleMania 31.5. They're saying that <laughs> it... It looks to be as good as WrestleMania based on what's on the card now. Yeah. Oh, we'll it, see. I don't know. I, I thought you were being super sarcastic when you were hyping up Elimination Chamber, but if it's good... The Elimination good. Chamber is awesome. Like, I'm really hyped for it. You've got Kevin Owens against John Cena, Dean Ambrose against fucking Seth Rollins for the championship. See, I'm hyped for that match, the uh, Kevin Owens one, but I know how shit Cena is, so he's probably just going to ruin it. Probably, yeah, but don't don't ruin my dream. <laughs> You've got fucking the vacant Intercontinental Championship match with, you know, at least two dis decent people in there. Yeah. You've got so, fucking 12-man tag team elimination chamber, the first one ever. It's going to be fucking cool. Is it? Or is it going to be really shit? I you think can't it'll tell be what's really happening. cool. I think it'll be cool. I don't know. Because it's going to be six people active at a time, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be such a fucking mess. It's going to be beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. Uh, what, uh, when's that then? What day is that? That is on the 31st of this month. But before that, we have NXT Unstoppable. Which happens on the 20th, yes. So by the time this podcast goes up, it will already have happened. Psyched, and we'll have a podcast on both of them shortly after they take place. We will. And uh, I'm wondering whether or not we should also cover uh, Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling's War of the world. I can't remember what, exactly what it's called. That's a really good book. I like the audio book personally. Oh, it's got a I, great I like War of the Worlds, yeah. But we should because it's probably it's probably better. One is out on eye pay per view. One is a TV taping for Ring of Honor. I think right. they're the only two that they have. Yeah. We should probably try to find it. I mean, I don't know anyone who's in it. Neither I do I. But it's got a lot of them. But it'll be awesome. It has like Shinsuke Nakamura and. Ah. Oh. Okada and Tanahashi and AJ Styles, they're the people I know. Yeah. I think the yep. Young Bucks are in there too. Great. Wonderful. Yep. We should check that out. Yep. So, next time you see us, we will be talking about NXT TakeOver Unstoppable. It'll be awesome. I hope so, yeah. Adios.